What a night, 2 a.m. in Montreal, going on a Canadian Arctic mission, flying on the 737-200 behind me. Color radio, good morning. It's Matt Black, 792. Crazy. Well, you will see my river is a gravel runway. Hi, so my name is JC. I'm first officer on the 737-200 at Chrono Aviation. This morning I'm doing my walk around for leaving for Mary River in the high Arctic, an iron mine. Over here, we have the reason why we use the 700, uh, 200. It's because we have gravel protectors on it. So that thing blows air backward. That breaks the vortex that generates in front of the engine that would suck gravel into the intake. So here I check that everything is fixed. There's no cracks on the heat. And we also do general inspection of the engine. That's another point of the gravel protection. It protects the flaps that are usually down for landing and take off. It protects them from gravel that might come up during uh, the roll. You want to come on in? Yeah. Oh, oh look at this. It's a bit this. of a tight squeeze, but yeah, it, this is the inside of the main gear wheel well of the 737-200. So as you can see, it's a lot of hoses and, uh, and cables and everything. So inside here, we just check basically rapidly. Everything seems fine. We also have the hydraulic quantity right here for one of the hydraulic systems. We have the hydraulic pressure right here. Here is the, um, the fire cut out for the APU. If the APU was to catch fire and nobody was in the cockpit, we can shut down the APU with this lever right here. There's always something new to explore. My first time inside a gear door of a 737-200, actually. What an experience. It's pretty massive, actually, here. You can hide a couple guys sitting here, right? Yeah, but when the gear comes up, it might be a bit tight. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> up here, we have two little dots, one yellow and one red one. They're there if the APU has an issue. One of them will pop out, depending on what the issue is. So during your walk around, I have to make sure that both of them are still there. Good uh, early morning, my name is Chris and my partner is JC. Today uh, we're going to be flying uh, from uh, Montreal, 44 degree north, to uh, Iqaluit, 67 degree north. Uh, it's going to be a 2 hour and 57 minute flight and we're going to be cruising at Mach Decimal 72. What's flying a 737-200 classic airplane like? Oh, it is old but gold. <laughs> really cool, really cool. So yeah, we're stopping in the cow with the, on our way to Mary River because uh, we have to refuel there. Hey, we're at Black 792 is uh, ready, Cyclops. Black 792, Roger, report airborne. Report airborne, Mad Black 792. Black 792 is airborne. Black 792, Roger. Contact Montreal Terminal on 125, decimal 15. 2515, see you on Black 792. Black 792, Roger. Black 792. Do you want something to eat? Yes, please. We got eggs or pancakes. It's 5.40 a.m. I felt completely asleep. It was so tiring. I think the sun's about to rise and breakfast is served.
nothing but white snow covered the whole ground. I don't see any houses, I don't see any trees, it's completely flying in isolation. Color Radio, good morning, it's Mad Black 792. Mad Black 792, Color Radio. Hello, sir, Mount Black, uh, 792. We're showing about uh, 30 miles to the uh, south of uh, the airport where we've been cleared by Montreal for the RNF 3 for approach via Depmo. Should uh, cross Depmo in about uh, four minutes with the landing in 10. Mount Black, 792, Roger, runway 34, wind 350 at 22, altimeter 3039. Mount Black, 792 is uh, APROC final runway 34. Mount Black, 792, wind 350 at 19, gusting 26. Check, coming in the... Here in Calwood, it's uh, it feels like minus 30. It's uh, minus 18 on the uh, on the ATIS. We just landed here where there is no ATC. It's only a flight service station. So we call them five minutes before starting the approach. When starting the approach and crossing the FAF on the five miles final for runway 34 here. Ooh. Ready for the cold, Sam? <laughs> yeah, well, I'm not ready. <laughs> oh, it's really cold and it's really wind chill as well. So minus 30. Minus 30? Yeah, not too bad. bad. It's my first time. Oh, it yeah. feels like crazy. It's not too bad. It's a Sunday and warm day for you, I guess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't think I can last two more minutes. I'm gonna go back. <laughs> it's crazy. I'm embarrassed to say I lasted 10 seconds out there. So I'm doing a second try with my gloves on with my hat on and I'm going with a flight attendant Emmanuel. So let's go together. Okay. <laughs> Whoa. It's quite a bit cold. I'm gonna run. What's your name sir? I'm Sean. Sean, yes. thank you. You save us. No problem. Wow. So cold and it's not that cold. <sighs> so nice driving the <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It really isn't. It's just a little windy today. It's only minus 19, right? And then with the wind chill you're looking at minus 30. Uh. So it's a balmy day in the north. It's crazy cold. I think my legs are getting frozen. What a brutal place. Oh. Quickly, I'm, I'm going back to the airplane. It's too cold. Oh, that wind chill was killing oh me. Lord. Yeah. What do you feel? How do you feel? It's cold. Yeah, I woke up straight away. Stronger than coffee. That cold and chill. Unbearable to me. Um, but I also see aviation is actually very vital to uh, come to remote places like this. There's probably no roads to get here. So welcome to Calwood. Uh, 63 degrees north it is. Uh, we're now heading for Mary River. And once the uh, fuel is completed, we'll have an hour and 32 minutes flight at uh, flight level 320 to 32,000 feet at the uh, Mach 7.2. Uh, well, you'll see Mary River is a gravel runway uh, where there's an iron ore mine based there. Or you can see here's a clear contrast. First <laughs> officer wearing a shirt, short sleeve shirt. And look at me. I have first on my hats and the scarves and layers of clothes <laughs> and then they don't get out of the plane. As a videographer, I go out of the plane and explore all kind of weather. Wind 340 at 20, gusting 25. 
792 is lining up at 3 4 from Delta and will be rolling. Have a good day. Engine stable. Just made the switch on the aircraft navigation system from the magnetic north to true north. Basically, it's, we changed the reference system between the magnetic north pole, which is somewhere in northern Canada, to the geographic north pole, which is really the top of the sphere of planet Earth. So as you can see here, we have the compass showing magnetic north at around 050 degrees, and we have the true heading that shows 326. That means that by changing reference, we have almost 80 degrees difference between uh, the two, uh, the two north. That way, and up in the Arctic, we're so close to the magnetic north, we have to navigate using true heading. Okay, so we're gonna be uh, landing in approximately uh, 30 minutes in, uh, on a gravel runway. Uh, it's gonna be a full flaps landing, flaps 40 degrees. Uh, we use that to reduce our speed for landing uh, on a gravel runway. That way we can use less reverse thrust to slow down the airplane and that way we protect the aircraft from being uh, struck by gravel. On the friction index uh, where, uh, we have today on the runway is uh, 0.38. Full friction is at 1.0. Usually a runway would be around 0.70 and 0.50. A paved runway with good conditions. But now on gravel and snow mixed runway, Today we have 0.38, which is quite good for that type of uh, run. Uh, on a gravel runway, if we have crosswinds with less than 0.30 uh, friction index, it's going to push the aircraft out of the runway while we land. So we have to be above 0.30 on a gravel runway usually if it's windy. The visibility is about 5 miles, so we should see the runway uh, a bit before landing and if we're lucky we're gonna see the terrain because we have a big mountains next to the aircraft during the approach. Yeah, the ceiling was uh, 2,400 scattered, 3,500 broken, 4,300 full of The idle thrust. And ladies and gentlemen, good morning. This is the flight deck. We're now leaving uh, 27,000 feet. In descent for Mary River, expecting a landing in approximately 15 minutes. The weather today, the winds are blowing from the east at 15 kilometers an hour. The sky is covered with light snow and temperature minus 17 Celsius. Thanks for flying with Chrono Jet. Clear sky gave away to uh, overcast. I think we're going to expect really bad weather. Um, I'm just hoping it's not as cold as Iqaluit with that wind chill. And uh, this is quite an experience. I've never done something like this before. Oh yes, 
the brakes up. Reverse on the wall. Flight Deck, first time you're speaking, we would like to welcome you to Mary River. Finally came on the ground here. Uh, fortunately, the weather is a little bit warmer, just a tad warmer than Iqaluit. For a guy from Dubai like me, this is still a torture. But I'm so excited to be landed on uh, the gravel to have this experience. It's wonderful. It's unique, and it's something that you know I will always remember. Expected. I've been offloaded from the flight because uh, the flight is a charter flight. The mining company has the priority, and uh, now I'm going to stay in here in the mine in a single accommodation for 12 hours, waiting for the next flight to come, and hopefully it will take me out of here. Well, to be fair, this room is actually better than lots of hotels. The food here is unreal. There's so much food and uh, it's really great food. I can live here for weeks. Um, you know, it's funny, a 737-200 Adventure turned into a, a, a day stay in the uh, a mine experience in the Arctic North. After staying in the mine for 12 hours, the plane is back and I'm finally departing. This has been a definitely amazing adventure. I always remember this time. 